one of the most formidable environments known to man. Together, we'll create this arctic environment in Blender in a way that is fast, easy, and yields realistic results. Our main character will be an arctic nomad and will give life to the scene using real-time clot simulation. We'll then add some atmospheric elements and I'll provide you with some free assets along the way so that it helps you in your scenes as well. Let's get to it. We'll start by importing our main character in the scene. This is a model from Sketchfab with the link in the description. After importing, we go into the rendered view to confirm if all the textures are present with the model, which they indeed are. Right from the get-go, we want to set the camera to focus all our creative efforts in only the area that the camera sees. I'm using a simple camera rig that is a part of my Blender starter file that you can get for free. Essentially, the camera is parented to the empty and has a track 2 constraint. So the camera always looks at the empty and follows its transformations. This is a simple yet powerful way to set up, control and animate your camera movements. We split our workspace to have a permanent rendered view for a scene, a solid view and a working window. Next, let's set up our background. This will be a suitable high resolution image taken from Unsplash. Now we're not just throwing this image in and calling it a day. We'll see how to set it up so that it gives meaningful results. We move this significantly at the back so that the parallax looks right when the camera moves. The next step is to set up the natural curvature of the environment as if it's a panorama. For this we'll add an empty at the center of the image plane and we'll put a simple deform modifier on the plane. Let's give it 13 subdivisions for it to have enough geometry for the bending operation. We'll set it to bend, the origin to be the empty, and the axis to be the Z axis. Now the trick here is to set the perspective right with the story. Our character is said to experience high winds because she's on a mountain in the Arctic. Moving the background such that it shows this perspective sells the story. When you're making environmental scenes as an individual, you want to systematize the process as much as you can. That means instead of modeling everything from scratch every time and spending an extraordinary amount of time, you should be working towards building asset libraries. That way you can focus on directing the scene to produce the best visuals rather than getting bogged down in the technical details by trying to do everything yourself. So to give life, we'll add real-time clot simulation using Cascade. This is a library that I've created and it's available on Gumroad and Blender Market as well. It contains 37 most commonly used clot simulations and you can use it to create basically anything that has a wavy animation. It was previously completely paid but I've made a free version for you to follow along. Link in the description. The simulation that we use here are present in the free version. So we drop tattered medium medium which means it's medium size with medium wind velocity. And if we play it, it runs real time. We'll place it just under the tip of the spear and resize it to match the form factor of the weapon. Next, we'll drop strip medium medium and we'll place this on the head to show a piece of cloth weaved into the hair. We'll adjust the rotation so that it looks right and we'll add two more strips by duplicating it. Next, we'll add tattered small medium so it's small in size and has medium wind velocity. And we'll place it behind the basket here. We'll resize it to what feels appropriate and we can see in the viewport that everything runs blazing fast in real time. These pieces of woven strings should move in the wind as well, so we'll use the strips again for this. We'll delete this part of geometry, put down the strip medium simulation and line up the copies at the bottom. To do this, we'll place it here resize and set the rotation. Then turn on snapping to faces and start copying and lining them up. Then we can play and see how it looks. Immediately we can see that all the simulations have the same phase and it does not look ideal. This is because all of them have same user data. But we do have one click solution for this. In the modifier section, we make each simulation as single user data. Now we go to scripting workspace, create a new text input and paste this script. I've provided this script with a free version as well. What it essentially does is that it looks for Alembe files in the project and offsets them randomly within a certain range. We run this script and lo and behold, it now appears random. 
We could do it manually as well and modify settings for each simulation, but this script automates this process. Let's see how it looks. Next, we set up the lighting. We give the background an emissive material. To set the foundations of the lighting, we'll use the same image as an HDRI. This casts similar lights and shadows, although a bit weak and flat. We'll fix that next. So if we see the image closely, we can identify the areas of shadows and areas of highlights. If you draw a straight line between them, we can identify the direction of the light. Once identified, we'll add an area light to cast somewhat of a diffuse but directional light. We'll move this light to roughly simulate the direction the light in the image is coming from. Now, in the camera view, we can right click, select adjust light power and move the pointer to the right to increase the power of the light. Similarly, we can increase the size of the area light just a bit to make the light a bit more diffuse. This looks about right. For the cloth, we give red diffuse material to some strips. The paid version does come with some interesting textures to go along as well. We make another diffuse texture and make it a bit off-white. Now we can copy these materials to the rest of the cloth simulations. We select the other sims, select the one having the material in the last, press Ctrl L and link materials. We do a similar process at the bottom as well, selecting alternate strips and giving them a red material. Then selecting the rest of the strips and giving them the off-white material. This looks better. Next, we'll add some atmospheric elements. This is a geometry node system which gives flowing particles. I'll link this in the description as well. We use this system to simulate falling snow from the direction of the wind. This adds one more layer of depth. Next, we'll add a 2D fog footage to give the scene another level of depth. We temporarily give it a solidify modifier so that we can see the plane from the top view and we place it just in front of our character. We can now adjust the plane for it to be somewhat of a low fog. Our breathing character releases puffs of vapor from her mouth in the Arctic climate. For this, we place a plane of steam elements in front of her mouth. Now we can duplicate the fog plane and place it between the character and the environment for some more fog. We can add another fog plane for more depth and then rotate the planes to match the fog direction as the direction of the wind. We can add another diffuse low-lying fog element to give some gradient to the fog. With all of this set in place, we are ready to render. The best thing about it is that it's all real-time and fast to render. With some color grading, we have our final result. Thank you so much for passing by. Leave a like if this was helpful. Do consider subscribing to the channel and my free email newsletter if you learn something. I will see you in the next one. Farewell.